The installation of the GeoLock wall anchor system from Foundation Support Works effectively stabilizes failing basement walls and, in many cases, can straighten walls over time. This video will explain the installation steps for a standard GeoLock wall anchor installation. With any wall anchor installation, remember to keep safety first. Be sure to have the appropriate construction attire such as eye protection and ear protection. Personal safety is the responsibility of each and every person and should comply with OSHA standards. Installation of the GeoLock wall anchor system can be completed in six overall steps. First, the placement of the anchor is determined and marked. Second, sod is removed at the earth anchor location and a hole is augured. Third, a rod is driven out through a small hole in the foundation wall. Fourth, the earth anchor is installed and attached to the rod. Next, the wall plate is attached on the inside of the basement wall and the system is tightened. And finally, the augered hole is backfilled and the system is retightened. Let's take a look at each of these steps in more detail, starting with step one. The placement of the anchor is determined and marked. Before installation begins, make sure all utilities have been marked. Also, be sure to check with the homeowner for any private utilities such as sprinkler lines, septic systems, and secondary electrical lines. Generally speaking, anchors should be spaced no more than 3 feet from the corners and 6 feet apart on poured or block walls. If the wall is highly damaged, spacing as close as 3 feet between anchors may be necessary. Field conditions such as cracks or obstacles on the wall may require slight repositioning. To begin, measure and mark wall plate locations on the inside wall using a marker such as duct tape or another non-permanent marking tool. Next, mark locations on the outside wall. Using windows, gas lines, or water lines as a reference point can be very helpful. This is very important and will make the installation run smoothly. Be sure that the markings on the inside match exactly with your outside marks. Then measure 12 feet straight out from the marking on the exterior wall. It is very important that this be accurate because this will be the center of the earth anchor hole. If there are obstacles outside of the home, such as decks, driveways, or sidewalks, earth anchor locations can be extended out past these obstacles with rod extensions rather than trying to remove the obstacle. Now that the earth anchor location has been determined, we can move on to step two of the installation process, removing sod and augering the earth anchor hole. Remove a section of sod at least 16 inches in diameter or slightly larger than your auger and set it aside in a place where it won't get damaged. Set a seven foot by seven foot tarp with a hole cut in the center over the location of the earth anchor hole. This will make cleanup later much easier and will help keep the lawn looking great for the homeowner. Dig the earth anchor hole with a 12 inch auger. Or, if you're digging by hand, dig a 16 inch by 12 inch by 50 inch deep hole, remembering to use the 12 foot measurement as the center of your hole. Then, clear away a small area of soil on the tarp to work from. With the anchor locations marked and the earth anchor hole augered, we are ready for step three, which is driving the anchor rod out through a small hole in the foundation wall. For a typical eight or nine foot tall wall, Measure 26 to 30 inches down from the exterior grade height and drill a 1 and an eighth inch hole through the wall. Drill at a slight downward angle that will place the rod in the earth anchor hole at least 36 inches below grade or below frost depth in your area. Be careful not to drill the hole at too steep of an angle because a slight downward angle at the wall can result in a very deep position when the rod is driven into the hole 12 foot out from the foundation wall. If you're drilling through a block wall, try to drill through the hollow of the block. With the hole drilled through the wall, you can then prepare the anchor rod to be driven through the hole. Anchor rods are 6 foot 8 inches in length, and they are an all-thread rod, so you can cut them into smaller sections if you have tight conditions in the basement, or you need to extend the length of the anchor due to obstacles such as decks or driveways. A standard anchor installation will use two full 6 foot 8 inch rods. On the first rod, 
place four to six inches of wax on the end to keep dirt from building up in the threads as you're driving the rod. Also, place a small amount of wax on the coupler end of the rod. The recommended wax to use is the same used in a toilet bowl wax ring. FSI has this wax available in one gallon buckets for your convenience. Tie a towel or rag around the rod to catch any wax splatter and keep the basement clean. Using a chipping hammer and appropriate rod driver, drive the anchor rod at the proper downward angle. A rod point may be attached to the anchor rod if tree roots and small rocks make driving the rod difficult. If the rod must be driven through footings or walls that are several feet from the foundation walls, such as in the case of a front stoop, an extendable drill bit can be used to pre-drill the hole. Once the first rod is driven, screw a coupler onto the end of the rod. On the second rod, add a small amount of wax on the coupler end and wax 18 to 24 inches on the wall plate end. This is an important step in order to keep moisture from entering the basement after the installation is complete. Tighten the two rods together. Using two pipe wrenches can be helpful. Drive the second anchor rod. Always be communicating with your crew member who is outside on whether they see the rod in the augered hole. If you didn't drive the rod at a proper downward angle and the rod ends up in the hole but not deep enough, pull the rod and try again. The FSI hydraulic rod puller is a great tool to help pull rods smoothly, efficiently, and with great ease. If you cannot find the anchor rod, tap on the rod with a hammer while someone on the outside listens inside the hole. Often, you'll be able to simply adjust the earth anchor hole on one side or the other by digging it wider and continue with the installation. With the rod now driven into the augered hole, the earth anchor can now be installed, which is step four in the overall installation process. Earth anchors come in three sizes, so double check the proposal to determine whether to install the small, medium, or large earth anchor. Widen the augered hole to accommodate the size of earth anchor you're going to install. Be sure the front side of the earth anchor hole is flattened completely so the anchor will be able to seat flush against the soil later in the installation process. Lower the earth anchor into the hole and place it onto the rod. Using an extended air ratchet, place the anchor nut on the rod with the tapered side of the nut toward the anchor. Pull the earth anchor back over the nut. Make sure three or four threads of the anchor rod are completely through the anchor nut to ensure the nut won't come off later during the installation. Now that the earth anchor is installed, let's move on to step five of the process, attaching and tightening the wall plate. First, install the wall sleeve over the anchor rod. Tap the sleeve to push it into the drilled hole until it's a quarter of an inch past the face of the wall. The wall sleeve not only helps to form a seal from outside moisture, but it also helps to protect the threads on the anchor rod as it's being tightened. Pack a good amount of wax around the sleeve and drilled hole, again to seal out moisture. This is an important step to avoid future service calls. Next, place the wall plate over the anchor rod. Wall plates come in two sizes, so again be sure to check the proposal to determine whether small or large wall plates should be used. Install the backup plate, washer and nut, and begin to tighten the anchor. From the outside, you'll be able to see the earth anchor pulling into the soil. Tighten the anchor to the appropriate torque, which is 90 foot-pounds for a poured wall, and 80 foot-pounds for a block wall, and 60 foot-pounds for a clay tile wall. The sixth and final step of a geolock wall anchor installation is backfilling the hole and retightening the system. Replace the soil into the hole in 8 to 10 inch layers and tamp as you go. Remember, all soil taken out of the hole must go back in. Rake any remaining soil from the grass into the hole. Replace and tamp the sod. Go back into the basement and retighten the anchor to the appropriate torque. Cut off the excess anchor rod. Using a portable bandsaw is by far more efficient and cost effective than using a sawzall. 
Place the rod cap on the end of the cut rod to protect the homeowner from any sharp edges. A good practice is to benchmark each anchor job. This can be helpful for any potential service calls or during an annual maintenance to show wall improvement. Using the FSI benchmarking sheet, measure and record the location of each wall plate. This is helpful should the homeowner choose to finish their basement or cover the anchors. Also, measure the depth of each earth anchor and distance each earth anchor is from the house. Then, set up a laser level along the wall in the basement. If you don't have a laser level, a plumb bob will also work. Measure from the wall to the laser or plumb bob at three locations. At the top of the wall, at the center of the wall, and at the bottom of the wall for each anchor location. Record these measurements on the benchmarking sheet. Once benchmarking is complete, place Do Not Tighten stickers on any anchors that the homeowner should not tighten. Place a branding label on a wall plate with your company information and the installation date. Then take a look around and clean up the work area, leaving it better than you found it. Finally, show the homeowner how to use the torque wrench you'll leave behind. Explain appropriate tightening procedures so they're able to continue to see wall improvement over time. An optional, but highly recommended, seventh step to a geolock wall anchor installation is to install the hideaway anchor covers. These covers are simple to install, look great, and allow the homeowner to continue to tighten their anchors while covering the steel wall plate. Hideaway wall anchor covers can be installed on both unfinished or finished walls. To install the covers on an unfinished wall, place the mounting bracket over the wall plate. Drill a hole through the mounting bracket and into the wall on all four corners of the mounting bracket and tap anchors into the four holes you drilled into the wall. Line the edges of the back of the mounting bracket using the anchor cover PVC tape. Then screw the mounting bracket into the wall and snap the outside cover onto the mounting bracket. For a finished wall, the installation is even easier. If the anchor was installed between two studs, simply screw the mounting bracket directly into the studs. Otherwise, place a 2.5 inch long 1x4 behind the sheetrock and screw the mounting bracket into that. Then snap the cover into place. The combination of the Geolock wall anchor and hideaway wall anchor covers not only installs quickly and easily, but they permanently stabilize foundation walls while maintaining an attractive living space. If you have any questions about this video or any site-specific scenarios, contact your FSI support team at 1-800-281-8545.